Um, and the time will come, the time will come very soon, that those with discernment will literally see the demons coming through. And actually some already do. So, as promised, um, I would uh, come back with a summary or a response to um, the video series The Extreme Christian. And, uh, well, I introduced it um, with a very short uh, introductory video called The Most Important Message You Don't Want to Hear. And that appeared to be true, as the number of subscribers uh, actually declined. Uh, during that series, and also the number of viewers per um, per part. So this it was three parts, and then the second part were about half the view, um, number of viewers than in the first part, and the third part it were again less. So that's that's uh, yeah, more or less as predicted and as ex expected. Unfortunately, I have to say. Now, normally I don't pay too much attention to statistics of number of subscribers and views and all this. But in this case, it's a very interesting indicator. Um, apart from that, I think that those that did view and respond were very serious. And, and yeah, that comes really out from the re reactions. And um, I would suggest, uh, by the way, that, that you read those comments that, um, that are written um, under the different videos, um, it's uh, yeah we can learn from it. We can um, learn from each other, from each other's experiences and point of view, and um, yeah, that's uh, I think that's a good thing. And just to give you an idea of the audience, um, we had uh, viewers from the United States, Canada, and the Netherlands. This is usual, the, the top three. Um, but also from Australia, United Kingdom, uh, from Africa, Kenya and, and Zimbabwe, um, <clears throat> but also from Mexico, France, South Africa, Fiji, South Korea, United Arab Emirates, uh, Belgium, Jamaica, uh, to my surprise from Nepal, uh, Slovenia, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Papua New Guinea, Belize, Germany, India, Singapore, Jordan. So it's really all over the place, which is it's very interesting and surprising also, um, well, with regards to some countries at least. And um, about 56% um, of the viewers are female and 44% um, male. That's the division. So it's quite well divided, I think. So in this series I presented a challenge to leave your smartphone uh, off and stuffed away for a week. I called it the Smartphone Detox Challenge. And um, it was interesting. I, will, I want to read a few uh, comments that people left. So again, you can f read all of them um, uh, under the, in YouTube in the comment section. But some I, I really want to share. Uh, <clears throat> and since they are there on YouTube, they're public, so it's okay for me to uh, to read them. Um, George wrote, uh, thank you for this message. It's something I've known and considered for a long time. I will put the phone down for a week, and I already know how my life will change. Thank you for the teaching. And then later, um, uh, after he has started this challenge, he writes, uh, Hi brother, I began this challenge last week and I can tell you that immediately it confirmed how distracting the phone was or is. Everyone with a smartphone knows this already. Just like a smoker knows smoking is not good for their health. All the notifications that I was anticipating throughout the day via social media apps that kept interrupting the time I spent with family, co-workers and loved ones are turned off. I bared myself from going onto Twitter and Instagram for the week, and I felt I was spending more time in the Spirit, in prayer. Reading Psalms and Proverbs the last week also changed. I'm listening more. The Word is more amplified. 
I'm reading with less head noise that my mind was constantly jumping to. Maybe oversupply of information. In the last few days I did jump back on those platforms to see what the world was up to. The earthquakes and award show antics. I do regret it because it's a very slippery slope and you go from just checking in, uh, into binging. This is my experience to date. But I feel as though I need to draw a line in the sand and delete my online accounts. But I do enjoy channels like this and other believers that uh, share content online. I hope that whoever gives this challenge a go can see the benefits and I look forward to other people's stories. Praise Ya. Yeah. So, uh, this was a very, uh, very nice and honest uh, response. And uh, thank you George for that. Um, and I think it's, it's edifying for others. Uh, someone else wrote, the phone has become a lifeline for me in getting sound Bible teaching and also encouragement and the gathering together of the saints who believe and are looking for the blessed hope and appearing of Jesus Christ in the pre-trip rapture of the church. Now many um, had this uh, reason that they they listen to messages and uh, follow channels like, like this channel. Um, and I will get back to that um, whether or not we, we need actually smartphone for that. Um, then uh, another comment. Yes, I agree. Thank you. I respect you and your uh, presence uh, and how you present your teaching of the Lord's word. We are supposed to be praying without ceasing. How can we be praying and meditating on his word if we are looking at our phones all the time? Another one wrote. I plan on uh, taking part in this challenge and will schedule my YouTube channel watching of believers to, who teach such as yourself for the end of the week. This is so thought provoking and so needed. Many are encouraging us right now uh, of the importance of spending much more time with Jesus by being in the word of God so that we will not be deceived. Um, then there was a, a comment of a um, YouTube user called Shadow of What I Once Was. And I will not, not read all of it, but some parts. Uh, wow, you have certainly challenged us in a hard way, Brother Stefan. Hearing you talk about your feelings on the smartphone reminded me much of how David Wilkerson used to talk about how he felt about television and what we should do about it. As in, get rid of it. And by the way, I... I will, uh, at the end of uh, this, um, this recap, uh, recap um, say a few more things about the uh, smartphone in particular. So, uh, she continues, If I was to do this challenge, and believe me, I do want to take you up on this challenge, I would have to modify uh, it somewhat, as in stay away from the internet, social media, turn it all off for a week, even all my teaching and edifying sermons and encouraging messages, but still keep my phone. And just spend all that extra time reading the Bible, praying and listening to my old audio Bible CDs while I'm looking for, uh, while, while I'm cooking or preparing my, uh, dinner for my husband. Make it fast of sorts. And uh, there are some things in here that, uh, that I like very much. Uh, she's given his thoughts how to, to do this and um, also to maintain what's important. Um, and then she ends, thanks for the challenge, brother Stefan. I look forward to doing it. I hear lots of Christians take breaks from social media and the internet from time to time, and their testimonies are always positive and talk about how refreshed they feel in the spirit and closer to the Lord they feel and stronger, even in their convictions. I'm excited to do this thing. Um, then I had some uh, back and forth um, correspondence with uh, another user who then um, s writes, uh, Thank you for your kind reply. I pray seriously for this matter. Without your warning and challenge, I would have realized, I would not have realized how much I came to rely on the internet. I thought I was all ready because I rarely watch TV. Sorry, I thought I was all right because I rarely watch TV and I'm not attracted to the worldly culture but I was mistaken. To begin with, I'd like to distinguish between necessity and convenience. I will prepare myself more against the digital autocr autocracy, although it seems a little bit late. Thank you for saying that there's always hope and a solution. 
And this very much ties into what I said the other time, that it's like um, the sinking sand. Once you are in, it's it sucks you in deeper and deeper, and it goes slowly. So in the beginning you really don't notice, and then at some point, yeah, when um, when you're, you're pointed to this, you will uh, discover how much uh, uh, depending uh, you are on all this. And how much you, uh, you, you enjoy these conveniences. Now, uh, a Dutch subscriber wrote, this is separate, this is in an email, so I won't mention um, her name. But she said, um, I said goodbye to my iPhone subscription. I think that's very hard for many people. I used it for my work. And then, um, yeah, she describes how she used it for work, but I will not, uh, not uh, write this here. But um, actually, she had a good excuse for having the phone. Um, no good reason, I would say. And I think this is a very brave step that uh, that she took. Very brave step. So, there's many more. And, um, yeah, as I said, you can read them for yourselves. Um, all in all, there were uh, a number of common reasons, or maybe excuses, for uh, using the smartphone. And I want to briefly address them and also answer to them. Because maybe there are things that you haven't considered or thought of. First of all, um, several people mentioned that they do not have uh, a landline. And they need to be reachable by children, for work, things like that. So, um, so that's uh, then their reason to have this smartphone. Now, there are two, two answers to this, uh, how you could deal with this, uh, apart from having a smartphone. First of all, simple uh, answer would be get a landline. And there's another advantage to this, which uh, to which I will get in a minute. Um, or get a dumb phone. Um, so there are also, as opposed to smartphones, there are also dumb phones. This is what I also use. So you can be reachable uh, also when you're outside if necessary. Although I mostly leave it at home when I go out. But anyway... Um, these are, uh, for the time being, still uh, sold and, and they work fine and uh, the networks uh, support uh, these phones just the same. Um, and you can call with them, you can be called, you can text with them, uh, there's even a camera inside, you can make pictures uh, if you would uh, want to. Although, personally, I use a camera for that. Uh, I'm maybe very old-fashioned in that, but okay, so be it. So, you can have this, and um, but it has all the necessary things, but it's not uh, internet-connected. So, uh, no uh, social media, no uh, uh, browsing around and all this. Of course, there's also no GPS in there, so you can also not do, the, do those kind of things. But um, it is an answer to the fact that you, if you need to be... Um, reachable by phone um, this can be solved this way so that's one uh, the second thing that uh, people said and it already came out in um, some of the comments that I just read is that they say I want to be um, to hear edifying messages now unfortunately we have come to the place in time where it's hard to find um, a, a church, a fellowship, a, a good fellowship, I would say, and it's hard to um, to to yeah to get together with Christians. And so the 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 next best best thing we have is to listen uh, online. Uh, and um, yeah, actually, this even this channel <laughs> came into existence because of of the request of uh, visitors. Because in the beginning, uh, we main yeah we had a lot of visitors from uh, from abroad that came to the island on vacation, and during their vacation attended our home church, and then um, yeah, they, several times the question came yeah, but uh, when I go back home, I would like to to continue to. Uh, to follow you and to listen to um, to these messages, and so that's actually the the reason why this uh, this channel came into existence. And and so yeah, I'm very aware of this um, this need. Um, and um, if we uh, if we look at um, the the statistics of um, the users that that follow this uh, on 
or the subscribers that follow this channel and, and uh, YouTube provides all these um, these statistics we can see that um, the largest percentage um, of viewers um, uses um, mobile phone to watch the videos and, and then the second uh, is computer and then on smart TV and finally on the tablet so mobile phone is, is as we see it's um, it's the largest group and it's it's growing so online messages can be helpful they can even be necessary um, uh, at least for a season but again you don't need a smartphone for that and, um, and I will get to that in a second because the same thing applies also to the next reason that people give namely they say but I need it for um, for many things that I do daily uh, my emailing uh, my e-banking uh, yeah, communications things that I, I just need to do and yes there are many things we need to do online nowadays and uh, practically every government uh, or government service and, and company has an app um, in order to connect with them and to do whatever you need to do uh, online uh, with them and so um, again I have to say you don't need a smartphone to do these kind of things in fact you can do uh, all of this perfectly well on a computer or on a, a laptop and this might be a bit of a this might be a bit of uh, a paradigm shift for many people but uh, these things work fine and so you have a laptop you preferably connect it with a cable um, to uh, to a modem and don't use Wi-Fi now there is uh, another reason to get a landline so that you can have a cabled connection to the internet um, why do I say that because Wi-Fi is uh, actually uh, it's very unhealthy the radiation is very unhealthy and um, so having um, a modem or a router in your house that uh, is 24-7 um, uh, transmitting this Wi-Fi signal and some people even have boosters so that they can reach the, the back of their garden and whatnot so these things it's very unhealthy and not only that uh, when you use Wi-Fi for example to connect your smartphone or uh, laptop uh, to the internet your smartphone itself is also a transmitter because it's not only receiving it's also transmitting so you have actually a Wi-Fi transmitter in your hand or in your pocket on you the whole day and that goes on top of the two three or four different GSM bands uh, frequencies that it's uh, sending on and receiving on top of the Bluetooth um, on top of most of the times a UMTS signal a GPS so there are many signals and frequencies that are continuously radiating from from this device and you have it on you the whole time and it's really uh, very un unhealthy um, thing and people say yes but I can turn it off but there are my neighbors have it so there's there's signal uh, anyway which is true of course you can't escape it but uh, the less signal especially near to you uh, yeah, the less uh, uh, risk you run for um, having health issues because of this um, so um, yeah I would really really advise this uh, get a laptop or, or a desktop computer and uh, have it cabled to the internet and um, and, and work that way and you can do everything you need to do the advantage of um, of, of using a laptop or desktop and, and in particular when it's connected by cable is that it sits in a perfect in, in a specific space in your house you put it somewhere on your desk in a, maybe in a, in a study room or whatever place you have for that and uh, so when you need to do uh, e-banking or whatever you go to it, you 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 use it, um, and you do whatever you need to do. And when you're finished, you can you can close it, turn it off, and walk away from it. And and the distractions are uh, are are gone. So that has a great advantage over um, having 24/7 this device in your hand or on you. Um, then the fourth reason that uh, people several people have mentioned is I want to listen to Christian music. Now, many have come to the notion that 
um, we have to listen to music all the time, every day. And that is, that is totally untrue. It has not been like that for, for most of history. Uh, and sure, there is good music, which is nice to listen to sometimes. Um, but music all the time, it's not good for the brain. And um, I've covered that uh, also in uh, two videos, the music and the message, uh, part one and two, um, in which I explained some of this, um, how uh, music and rhythms work on the brain. Um, so this is also not a, a normal and a healthy thing. We are not supposed to listen to music all the time. Uh, and, and by the way, much of the so-called um, CCM, eh, Contemporary Christian Music, is really not so Christian uh, to begin with. Uh, what's wrong with uh, every now and then uh, playing a CD or an, an MP3 um, and, and listen to that uh, through your house uh, audio system, for example? Or maybe once in a while actually going to a concert, if this is uh, possible. So, yeah, it's always difficult uh, when you're used to things, when, you, um, when things are convenient to go a step back. But uh, it's also a good thing to do so. Uh, and I think in particular in this uh, case. So if we look at the different motivations to have a smartphone, mostly it comes down to convenience. And so to the point that we think that they, these conveniences have become necessities. And they were not necessities 20 years ago and they are not now. And sure, your company or school may require you to have a smartphone, but um, it's not up to them to decide which device uh, you have and how you use it. You have the right to say no. And it's up to them to provide an alternative to, uh, to whatever they uh, they require. I say all this not because I am against technology per se. Actually, I use technology all the time. I work in this field. But the smartphone is not just a device. Um, it is designed to accelerate our dependency. And it's designed to move us towards the platform that will uh, facilitate the mark of the beast. So, but my warning is even stronger. The smartphone is a conduit to, for demonic influence uh, from the demonic realm into our realm. And this may seem far-fetched, but please check this video that uh, I did some years ago, New Smartphones, A Quantum Leap, where I speak more on this. Um, and the time will come, the time will come very soon that those with discernment will literally see the demons coming through. And actually some already do. Apart from that, at this point in time, it cannot be denied that the demonic influence of this device and all that uh, it delivers is, uh, is very notable and very um, powerful and influencing um, yeah, whole generations, especially the, new, the newer generations, but um, actually it goes through all ages. Brothers and sisters, we are at the end of the age. And uh, this is not life as usual. And it will get more difficult, more difficult to say no as time moves on. So I hope that uh, this has been uh, edifying and helpful to you and uh, yeah, I hope uh, indeed that uh, you uh, will escape uh, from this sinking sand, from this trap that has been set to, um, to, to catch us literally. Um, I thank you for uh, participating. I thank you uh, for your um, responses, uh, for those that did so. And of course, you may continue to do so uh, if you feel like it, uh, because uh, yeah, others will read these comments that you leave, and this is always uh, helpful. Um, and so, so check them also every now and then. Go back to this video, see if there's new comments, and uh, um, yeah. 
how it is can uh, help you or confirm you uh, one way or the other. Thank you for your attention.